All right, ready to dive deep. Today we're tackling a question for the ages. What makes Aquarians tick? We're breaking out the astrological magnifying glass, taking a deep dive into Aquarius personality traits from Zodiac Fusion. You know me, love a good personality puzzle, and Aquarians are notorious for being complex and unconventional. This article claims to decode their quirks and gifts. I'm ready to see if it lives up to the hype. It definitely goes beyond those typical sun sign stereotypes. Yeah. We're talking about understanding the why behind their independent nature, their drive for innovation, and even their approach to love and friendship. Okay, so it's not just going to tell us their lucky numbers and call it a day. Not at all. This is about understanding the deeper motivations and patterns that make Aquarians so fascinating. I'm in. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's back up for a second. For anyone who needs a quick refresher, when are we talking about birthday-wise for Aquarians? And what are those defining characteristics that make them, well, Aquarian? So we're talking about those born between January 20th and February 18th. And when it comes to their astrological DNA, Aquarius is an air sign, which already gives us some clues about their nature. Air signs, right. They're the thinkers, the communicators, the ones who always seem to have their heads in the clouds. Exactly. They thrive on intellectual stimulation, value their freedom, and often have a knack for innovation and originality. Which makes sense, considering their ruling planet is Uranus, right? Mm -hmm. The planet of rebellion, change, and all things unconventional. Exactly. That Uranian energy is strong with this sign. It's what fuels their independent spirit, their humanitarian instincts, and even their sometimes quirky way of seeing the world. Okay, so we've got the basics down, but let's get into the good stuff. This article claims to go beyond those surface-level descriptions and really crack the cone on Aquarius traits. What's the first layer we're peeling back? Well, the article starts by dissecting that classic Aquarian intellectualism. They're not just curious, they have this insatiable thirst for knowledge and a knack for thinking outside the box. Okay, so not just your average trivia night champions, we're talking next level intellectual powerhouses here. How does this actually play out in their lives? Think about it this way. An Aquarius is the person at a party who'd rather talk about philosophy, social justice, or the latest scientific breakthrough that makes small talk about the weather. They're driven by a deep need to understand the world around them, and they're not afraid to challenge conventional thinking. So basically, they're the ones asking the big questions and pushing everyone else to think deeper. I can see how that could be both intriguing and a little intimidating. Absolutely. But that intellectual firepower isn't just for show. They have a deep-seated desire to use their knowledge to make a positive impact on the world. Which brings us to that other classic Aquarius trait, their humanitarian side. It's like their brain power is matched by their big hearts. Exactly. This isn't just about writing a check or liking a cause on social media. They're driven to take action, whether that's volunteering their time, advocating for social justice, or simply living their lives in a way that aligns with their values. It's that whole walk-the-walk walk mentality, right? Precisely. And this dedication to making the world a better place ties back to that Uranian influence. They're natural-born rebels with a cause, always pushing for progress and positive change. Which probably explains why they're drawn to careers that allow them to put their innovative minds and compassionate hearts to good use. You hit the nail on the head. The article specifically mentions fields like technology, science, social activism, and the arts as being particularly appealing to Aquarians. It's like they're hardwired to challenge the status quo, whether they're developing groundbreaking technology, fighting for social justice, or creating art that pushes boundaries. And they often approach these pursuits with a unique blend of logic and intuition. They're the ones who can analyze a problem from all angles, come up with a completely out-of-the-box solution, and then somehow make it look effortless. Okay, so we're talking about a pretty impressive combination of traits here intellectual curiosity, a passion for making a difference, and a knack for innovation. It's like the ultimate recipe for a world-changing individual. But I have a feeling there's more to this story, right? You know it. We've only just scratched the surface. Let's delve a little deeper into how these traits influence their personal lives, particularly when it comes to relationships. After all, what good is understanding an Aquarius if we don't know how they connect with others? Right. Because, let's be honest, we all know an Aquarius who seems to march to the beat of their own drum. And while that independent streak is admirable, I'm guessing it can also lead to some interesting dynamics in their relationships. You can say that again. Let's just say that understanding the nuances of Aquarius compatibility is key to navigating their world. But we'll dive into all of that right after the break. Stay with us. And we're back, ready to untangle this 
fascinating and sometimes perplexing world of Aquarius compatibility. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll admit, I have a love-hate relationship with these astrological compatibility charts. I understand the skepticism. It's easy to fall into that trap of thinking, oh, these two signs are doomed, or those two are destined for eternal bliss based solely on their sun signs. Exactly. Like, it's some kind of cosmic guarantee, but we both know real life is far more nuanced than that. Absolutely. Think of these compatibility insights as more of a starting point, a way to understand the potential energies and dynamics that might come into play. Okay, so let's talk potential. What does this article say about the signs that tend to click with our Aquarian friends? Well, according to the article, the signs that really get those Aquarian synapses firing are Gemini and Libra. Makes sense. We've already established that air signs are drawn to each other like moths to a flame, right? Exactly. It's that shared love of intellectual stimulation, open communication, and a certain level of emotional detachment that creates that instant spark. So with Gemini, it's all about witty banter, endless curiosity, and probably a shared love of a good debate. Spot on. The article specifically mentions how Geminis, with their quick wit and adaptability, can keep up with an Aquarius's mental gymnastics. They challenge each other, keep things interesting, and there's never a dull moment. It's like having a built-in brainstorming partner, someone who's always up for exploring new ideas no matter how out there they might seem. Precisely. Now with Libra, it's a bit different. It's less about the constant exchange of ideas and more about finding a sense of balance and harmony. Which is interesting because Aquarians are known for their independence streak. It's not like they're exactly known for being clingy. And that's precisely why it works so well. Libras, with their diplomatic nature and appreciation for fairness, give Aquarians the space they need to breathe. There's no pressure to conform or compromise their individuality. Plus, they both share that strong sense of justice and a desire to make the world a better place. I can see them bonding over humanitarian causes or late-night philosophical debates about the meaning of life. Absolutely. Now, the article also highlights Aries and Sagittarius as being potentially strong matches for Aquarius, although it does mention that these pairings might require a bit more work. Okay, so a little more friction, a little more spark. Tell me more. With Aries, it's that shared love of adventure and pushing boundaries hmm. that creates that initial attraction. Both signs are incredibly independent and aren't afraid to challenge the status quo. But Aries are fire signs, right? Yeah. Known for their passion and impulsivity. That seems like it could clash with the Aquarius's more detached air sign energy. And you're right. It definitely can. But if both partners are willing to meet each other halfway, that clash can actually be incredibly exciting. It's like that saying opposites attract. Exactly. Aries brings the heat, the spontaneity, the willingness to dive headfirst into new experiences. And Aquarius provides the air, the intellectual perspective, the ability to see the bigger picture. So it's about finding that balance between action and contemplation, passion, and detachment. Exactly. Now, with Sagittarius, it's a bit different. It's about that shared love of freedom exploration and expanding their horizons both physically and intellectually. So imagine these two jets setting around the world, soaking up new cultures and engaging in deep conversations about philosophy and the mysteries of the universe. You've got it. They encourage each other's growth, celebrate their individuality, and never let things get too stagnant. Sounds like the ultimate recipe for a life less ordinary. But I have a feeling no compatibility conversation would be complete without addressing the potential challenges right. You know it. And in this case, the article suggests that those challenges might arise with water signs like Cancer and Scorpio. Okay, so we're talking about a classic clash between water and air, emotion and intellect. Precisely. With cancer, it often comes down to differing needs in terms of emotional expression and intimacy. So cancers being water signs are all about diving deep into their emotions, creating that sense of closeness and security. Exactly. And while Aquarians are capable of deep love and affection, they tend to express it in less conventional ways. It's more about acts of service, thoughtful gestures, maybe even a well-timed philosophical debate about the nature of love itself. Exactly, which can leave our dear cancer friends feeling a bit confused and emotionally unmoored. So communication is key here, right? Making sure those needs are being expressed and understood. Absolutely. Now with Scorpio, it's a bit more complex. It's not just about differing styles of emotional expression. It's about that fundamental clash between Scorpio's intensity and Aquarius's need for independence. Okay, I can see how that could be tricky. Scorpios are known for their passion, their depth, and let's be honest, their slight tendency for possessiveness. And Aquarians are not about to be possessed. They need their freedom, their space to explore their intellectual independence. 
So you're saying this pairing could either be a passionate whirlwind romance or a complete and utter disaster. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. But again, with awareness, communication, and a willingness to understand and respect each other's needs, even these seemingly opposed signs can find a way to make it work. It's about embracing those differences, right? Seeing them as opportunities for growth rather than insurmountable obstacles. Precisely. And remember, dear listener, these compatibility insights are just one piece of the puzzle. There are countless other factors at play when it comes to relationships. It's not about limiting ourselves to certain signs, but rather understanding the potential dynamics and using that knowledge to build stronger, more fulfilling connections. Absolutely. But speaking of building connections, let's shift gears and talk about Aquarius in the realm of friendship. Because we all need those ride-or-die friends who just get us right. Exactly. And luckily for our Aquarian friends, the article suggests that they have a knack for attracting loyal and supportive companions. But I'm guessing those air sign affinities are still going strong, right? You bet. Gemini and Libra continue to reign supreme as the ultimate BFFs for Aquarius. Makes sense. Imagine the three of them huddled over a table, debating the latest scientific discoveries, brainstorming world-changing ideas, or just cracking each other up with their quirky humor. It's a beautiful thing to witness. These friendships are built on a foundation of mutual respect, shared intellectual curiosity, and that unspoken understanding that comes from simply being on the same wavelength. And with Aries and Sagittarius friends, I'm guessing things get a little more adventurous. You can say that again? Think spontaneous road trips, late-night philosophical debates under the stars, and maybe even a few friendly competitions to see who can come up with the most outlandish idea. It's like having a built-in adventure buddy, someone who's always up for exploring new territory, both literally and figuratively. Precisely. But just like with romantic relationships, friendships with Cancer and Scorpio might require a bit more finesse. Okay, so those emotional waters can get a little choppy even in platonic relationships. Exactly. Cancers might crave a level of emotional intimacy and reassurance that Aquarians aren't always comfortable with. And Scorpios, with their intensity and need for control, might butt heads with the Aquarius's independent streak. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, right? It's not impossible, but it takes a conscious effort to make it work. Precisely. But if both parties are willing to be patient, understanding, and embrace those differences, these friendships can be incredibly rewarding. Because ultimately, isn't that what friendship is all about? Accepting each other's quirks and celebrating what makes each other unique? Beautifully said. But you know what they say, knowledge is power. And now that we have a better understanding of Aquarius compatibility, let's talk about how to connect with these fascinating individuals. Right, because it's one thing to know they're drawn to intellectual conversations and humanitarian causes, but how do we actually put that into practice? That's where the real magic happens. And luckily for us, this article provides some concrete tips for navigating those interactions. Whether yeah. We're talking about friendships, romantic relationships, or even professional settings. Okay, I'm all ears. Let's unpack those golden nuggets of wisdom after a quick break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back and ready to crack the code on connecting with those free-thinking Aquarians because, Why? let's face it, understanding their compatibility profile is one thing, but knowing how to approach them in real life, that's the real game changer. Couldn't agree more. And thankfully, this article doesn't just leave us hanging with vague notions of respect their independence. Yeah. It gets into the nitty-gritty of what that actually looks like. Okay, so spill the tea. What are the secrets to winning over an Aquarius, whether it's as a friend, a romantic partner, or even a colleague? Well, across the board, the key takeaway is this. To truly connect with an Aquarius, you have to engage their mind, respect their autonomy, and be open to their unique perspective on the world. That sounds less like winning them over and more like meeting them on their level, which I can appreciate. Precisely. Remember, these are air signs. Their minds are always buzzing with ideas. <laughs> So if you want to connect, you need to bring your intellectual A-game to the table. So ditch the small talk and come prepared with a thought-provoking question or a fascinating fact about the universe. Now you're speaking their language. In friendships, this could look like engaging in those late-night philosophical debates supporting their latest humanitarian endeavor, or even just being open to hearing their latest theory about extraterrestrial life. Basically be their intellectual equal and their biggest cheerleader all rolled into one. Exactly. Romantically, it's about understanding that their need for freedom isn't a phase. It's fundamental to who they are. Mm. Trying to control or possess an Aquarius is like trying to clip the wings of a bird. It just won't fly. So lest you complete me and more, let's explore the universe together, but also very much in our own way. You're getting it. 
It's about creating a partnership based on mutual respect, shared intellectual curiosity, and a willingness to embrace each other's individuality. And what about navigating the professional world with an Aquarius? They strike me as the type who would thrive in a creative, unconventional work environment, not so much in a stuffy corporate setting. You're spot on. In a business setting, it's crucial to value their innovative ideas, give them the space to work independently, and recognize that their desire to make a difference often extends beyond the bottom line. So basically ditch the micromanaging, give them projects that ignite their passions, and maybe consider implementing a four-day work week. Now you're talking. But on a serious note, the article emphasizes that, regardless of the setting, honesty, authenticity, and a genuine appreciation for their quirks are crucial for building lasting connections with Aquarians. Because ultimately, it's about embracing those quirks, right? Those unexpected bursts of brilliance, those moments of enduring detachment, even their tendency to go off on a tangent about quantum physics at a dinner party. Absolutely. It's yeah. those quirks that make them so uniquely Aquarian. And when you embrace those quirks, you're essentially saying, I see for who you truly are, and I celebrate that. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Getting to know an Aquarius sounds like a wild, unpredictable, and endlessly fascinating adventure. It definitely is. But before we wrap up our deep dive into the world of Aquarius, there are a few key details we can't forget to mention. Oh, right. We have to give our listeners those essential Aquarian stats. The lucky numbers, the power, colors, the gemstone that will unlock their hidden potential. Ha ha. Ah. Don't worry, I've got you covered. According to the article, the lucky numbers for Aquarius are 4, 7, 11, and 22. Their power colors are shades of blue and green, reflecting their airy intellectual nature, yet grounded humanitarian hearts. It's like the sky and the earth coming together, vast, expansive, yet firmly rooted in reality. I love it. And the gemstone, what mystical properties does it hold? Their birthstone is the amethyst, a stone associated with intuition, clarity, and spiritual connection. It's said to enhance creativity, promote peace, and even ward off negative energy. The perfect talisman for our truth-seeking, free-thinking Aquarian friends. Exactly. And on that note, I think we've officially cracked the code on the Aquarius personality. We've explored their strengths, decoded their challenges, and even learned how to win them over, or at least how to hold a decent conversation without sending them running for the hills. Uh-huh. Right? Right. Remember, dear listener, this is just a starting point. There's always more to discover, more to learn, and more to appreciate about the enigmatic sign of Aquarius. Absolutely. And speaking of further exploration, remember that intriguing mention of combining Western and Chinese zodiacs for a more nuanced understanding. That sounds like a whole other deep dive waiting to happen. It does. But for now, we'll leave you with that thought. A spark of curiosity to ignite your own astrological journey. Mm. And on that note, we'll bid you farewell for today. But be sure to join us next time as we plunge into another fascinating deep dive. Until then, happy exploring.